All right, good morning, sisters and brothers, and welcome to this morning's morning prayer. This is the first day of the working week, Monday, the 23rd of January. So 23 days into the new year. And I trust that you are well this morning and we're ready to begin not just a new day, but a new week by the grace of God. And so let's pray as we start this new day and this new week before God. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praise in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. as we rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Above you, the Holy One arises, and above you, God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth and darkness the peoples, above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, the kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight nor moonlight shine upon you. But the Lord will be your everlasting light. Your God will be your splendor. <clears throat> For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises and above you God's glory appears. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. <clears throat> Tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the peoples and his wonders among all nations. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. And the Benedictus. This is the Christ, the chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. 
through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. This is the Christ, the Chosen of God, the one who will bring healing to the nations. And collect Almighty God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace. And in the renewal of our lives, make known your heavenly glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonder of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, sustain us by your mighty power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Psalm this morning is Psalm 108, Psalm 108. <coughs> Psalm 108, first the refrain. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. My heart is ready, O God, my heart is ready. I will sing and give you praise. Awake, my soul, awake, harp and lyre, that I may awaken the dawn. I will give you thanks, O Lord, among the peoples, I will sing praise to you among the nations, for your loving kindness is as high as the heavens, and your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens, and your glory over all the earth, that your beloved may be delivered. Save us by your right hand and answer me. God has spoken in his holiness. I will triumph and divide Shechem and share out the valley of Succoth. Gilead is mine and Manasseh is mine. Ephraim is my helmet and Judah my scepter. Moab shall be my washpot. Over Edom will I cast my sandal. Across Philistia will I shout in triumph. Who will lead me into the strong city? Who will bring me into Edom? Have you not cast us off, O God? Will you, not, will you no longer go forth with our troops? O grant us your help against the enemy, for earthly help is in vain. Through God will we do great acts, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. 
Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. And our prayer. In times of terror, O God, give us boldness to act with courage, yet with mercy. For you rule the nations with a sword of truth. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. He rules the nations with the sword of truth. Yes, so sisters and brothers, all the world belongs to God. He triumphs over all the enemies. Shechem, Succoth, Gilead, Manasseh, Ephraim, Judah, Moab, Edom, Philistia, all, all are subjected to God. Yes, these are just symbols of all the cities of the world, everywhere. God is, God reigns. God reigns, sisters and brothers. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Amen. Let's, um, let's move to our Old Testament reading. <coughs> and uh, we are in the book of Hosea, the prophet Hosea, which is right after Daniel in the Old Testament. Hosea, and we are in chapter 2. From verse 18 to the end of chapter 3. <clears throat> In that day, declares the Lord, you will call me my husband. You will no longer call me my master. I will remove the names of the Baals from her lips. No longer will their names be invoked. In that day, I will make a covenant with them, with the beasts of the fields, the birds of the sky, and the creatures that move along the ground. Bow and sword and battle I will abolish from the land so that all may lie, lie down in safety. I will betroth you to me forever. I will betroth you in righteousness and justice, in love and compassion. I will betroth you in faithfulness, and you will acknowledge the Lord. In that day I will respond declares the Lord. I will respond to the skies and they will respond to the earth and the earth will respond to the grain, the new wine and the olive oil and they will respond to Jezreel. I will plant her for myself in the land. I will show my love to the one I called not my loved one. I will say to those called not my people, you are my people. And they will say, you are my God. Hallelujah. What a day that is. We are sisters and brothers. We are the ones who are called not my people. And God is saying, you are my people and I am your God. Hallelujah. Anyway. We carry on to chapter 3. The Lord said to me, that is Hosea, Go, show your love to your wife again, though she's loved by another man and is an adulteress. Love her as the Lord loves the Israelites, though they turn to other gods and love the sacred raisin cakes. So I bought her for 15 shekels of silver and about a homer and a, and a, and a lethek of barley. Oh, lethek, never heard of that before. Anyway. Then I told her, you are to live with me for many days. You must not be a prostitute or be intimate with any man. And I will behave the same way toward you. For the Israelites will live for many days without king or prince, without sacrifice or sacred stones, without ephod or household gods. 
Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. They will come trembling to the Lord and to his blessings in the last days. Amen. So now, um, Hosea's life, again, remember Hosea's life is, a, is an object lesson is a, to the people of Israel. So what Hosea is going through with his own life, his wife and his children, are reflected in, the, in God's, in the relationship that God has with his people. And so Hosea, the wife had gone off, uh, become unfaithful, living with a prostitute, and so on. God says, go back, get your wife. <laughs> Purchase her back from the market, from the, 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 the slave, you know, prostitution, and, re and bring her back into your home. And she will be a wife again. And in the same way, God is bringing back Israel. And and marrying her again, as it were, with his love upon her, and, um, and, and so on. So yes, uh, because God will not forsake his people forever. And so they, they will return, he says. Afterwards, the Israelites will return and seek the Lord their God and David their king. Amen. And this, sisters and brothers, not just, as I said, these prophecies go beyond just the, the, the national people of Israel. Israel in prophecy of the people of God, which is, which is us. <laughs> which is not, has nothing to do with nationality. It has to do with faith. Uh, <clears throat> New Testament reading. First Corinthians chapter 9 from verse 15. To the end. First Corinthians nine, verse fifteen, to the end. But I have not used any of these rights. Am I not writing this in the hope that you will do such things for me? For I would rather die than allow anyone to deprive me of this boast. For when I preach the gospel, I cannot boast, since I am compelled to preach. Woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. If I preach voluntarily, I have a reward. If not voluntarily, I am simply discharging the trust committed to me. What then is my reward? Just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge, and so that making, and so not make full use of my rights as a preacher of the gospel. Though I am free, I belong to no one. I have made myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so as to win those under the law. To those not having the law, I became like one not of having the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I'm under Christ's law, so as to win those not having the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people, so that by all possible means I might save some. I do all this for the sake of the gospel, that I may share in its blessings. Hallelujah. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. 
Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last. But we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Amen, oh, sisters and brothers. This is such a powerful, you know, I need to preach on this sometime. Uh, <laughs> this is such a powerful reading right here. Paul is talking about his right as an apostle of the gospel um, to, 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 well, his right generally. But he started talking about his right to, to be paid, to, to have, to, to live by the gospel. If you remember the last verse of the previous section, um, he says, in the same way the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should receive their living from the gospel. That's verse 14. But starting at verse 15 this morning, we, we look, we, we, we notice that Paul is saying, I am not insisting on that right. Instead, I, I, would, rather, I would rather go without than, than, than anybody should say that the gospel is hindered because I'm asking for money. You know, very different from a lot of people in our society today who preach the gospel, isn't it? Especially those on television. Um, you know, very different. Paul says, I do not want to be deprived of this boast. What is the boast? That I am preaching the gospel without asking for money, free of charge. I need to preach the gospel. I don't want any hindrance in the gospel. He said, I need to be able to offer the gospel freely without any, any hindrance at all. So verse 16, for when I preach the gospel I cannot boast since I am compelled to preach. It says, woe to me if I do not preach the gospel. Paul says, I, am, I, I have this gospel in my bones that I am called to preach. I am compelled to preach. You know, woe to me. May God's judgment fall on me if I do not preach this gospel. But what is my reward for preaching this gospel? Is it for money from you? No. No, my reward is not your payment. No, no, no. My reward, he says this. He says just this, that in preaching the gospel, I may offer it free of charge, so not make full use of my rights as a preacher of the gospel. That's my reward, that I offer the gospel free of charge, and my conscience is clear that I do not have to, 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 to defend anything regarding money. I must offer it free of charge, always, always. But then he goes on. I mean, I, I, as I said, this is, he it, it, it talks about, he talks about his, his freedom to do what he wants. And because of all this, he has certain freedom. He says, I have, a, I, 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 I have the freedom to, 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 to be in, in different circumstances, how I want to be in those circumstances, so that uh, for the sake of the gospel, you know, he says, I'm not very rigid. I, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not bound in one way and tied to one way of doing things. He said, the gospel gives me certain freedom that allows me to, to, to be certain things in certain circumstances so that the gospel might be preached so that by God's grace I may I might save some. So I become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. I do this for the sake of the gospel. I'm not rigid. I'm not just, you know, I'm not just an introvert when I need to be. I'm an introvert when I need to be. I'm an extrovert when I need to be. I'm a Gentile when I need to be. I'm a Jew when I need to be. You know, I, you know whatever, whatever it takes to, to, to preach the gospel, I will adjust myself. I will, I am free to, 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 
to sort of change my demeanor, change my circumstances to fit the situation so that the gospel is preached. Paul is passionate about this gospel, sisters and brothers. And the final section, oh, this section, the need for self-discipline. Paul says the only way we are going to get the prize at the end. This is the reward for preaching the gospel. This is the reward for the gospel is that there is a prize at the very end of this, this journey. But Paul says we don't get the prize unless we are disciplined. Now this discipline, sisters and brothers, is, it means the Christian life is a life of discipline. He says, you don't run aimlessly, you run to win the prize. You don't box aimlessly as if you're boxing in the air. You box, you, you try to land punches so that your opponent is knocked out. That is how you, you, the, 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 the game works. <laughs> and so it's in, the, in the same way, this, these are analogies, of course, the Christian life is not a race and it's not a boxing match. But the point is, the, the analogy is that those people in, in, the, in the ring and in the arena and so on, they have to discipline themselves in order to win. We too are called to discipline our lives if we are going to win the prize at the end of our journey. Um, and that discipline, sisters and brothers, um, well, that discipline takes many forms. But it's through prayer, it's through fasting, it's through um, reflection, it's through uh, self-denial. It's, 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 you know, it, the discipline is for the sake of the gospel, is what Paul is talking about. Uh, I, I have a right to be paid for the gospel, but I have chosen not to. You know, uh, uh, it's one of those discipline he has because he doesn't want the gospel to be in disrepute. He's trying very hard so that the gospel is not tainted by money or by his rights and all these. He said, I have a right to my rights, but I'm not going to claim my rights for the sake of the gospel. Oh, hallelujah. May God help us that we have this same attitude to the gospel, sisters and brothers. When we go out today, do we live for the sake of the gospel? We'd live for for our sake. Just, you know, we do whatever we want. Paul is saying, everything I do, I do with the gospel in mind. I want to please God. I want to make sure that the gospel is not maligned. I don't care what they say about Paul. I, I care what they say about Christ being, be, being witnessed by Paul. You know, and, and that, sisters and brothers, should be our attitude as well. Let's let's pray. <laughs> mm. Amen. Our Father, thank you for <clears throat> bringing us to the beginning of another day and another week. We are grateful, Lord, <clears throat> for your grace and mercy. We thank you for the gospel, which is the power of God for the salvation of all those who believe. We pray, Lord, uh, give us this kind of attitude, we pray, like Paul, to have the gospel as the central thing in our lives, the main thing, the number one thing, and that we, and so that it will govern everything we do and think in our own lives and with our relationship with others. Lord, give us this attitude to the gospel, we pray. We pray today and and forever. Amen. And so, Lord, we entrust our journey to you today and all that we are doing, whatever, whatever today holds, we, we bring it all to you. We bring our own concerns to you, our needs and our, uh, Lord, and our fears and our, our hopes, our desires. We bring them all to you today, Lord, afresh. And we ask, O oh God, that you will hear our prayer, hear the prayer of our hearts, of your people's hearts today. Lord, we ask for, 
for your grace to sustain us on the journey that we embark on this day, this week. So Lord, watch over us, we pray. Give us strength for the journey, oh Lord, we pray. And help us in our weakness to be strong in you. That however weak we become, we know that by your grace, in your power, we are strong. In our own selves, we are weak. But Lord, it is not by my might or my power, but by your spirit. And so Lord, may your spirit, may your spirit empower us for the journey today. And so that we will not fall into temptation, but we will be overcomers through our faith today. Lord, we pray. And so, Lord God, remember us in your mercy. Remember those who are sick. Remember those who are suffering. Those, oh God, who are in need of healing in their bodies and minds. Lord, remember them. Today, remember, Lord, those in our own community, those in our own congregation, and those we know, and those of their families. Lord, we pray physical healing, those who are suffering physically in body, those who are suffering in mind. We pray that you heal the brokenness of body and mind and spirit. Lord, those who are those, Lord, suffering in all other ways. We pray. We pray for those struggling financially in this recession. We pray for healing in that brokenness. We pray for those who are struggling in their relationships. We pray that you will heal broken lives and broken relationships. Lord, we pray. We ask for your healing touch upon our lives and upon our world. We pray for peace among uh, among one another, we pray for peace in our hearts. We pray for peace in relationships. We pray for peace in our world. We ask, Lord, for the peace of this world. Peace in Ukraine. We pray, Lord, for an end to the war and that those people will live in peace again and they rebuild their country again. Lord, we pray for an end to that war. Break the weapons of war, we pray, break, break uh, Putin's weapons, Lord, every machine gun, every tank, break them, we pray, and destroy his plans and his machinations for war. Lord, bring an end to that war and change the heart of Putin and those who seek war against the Ukrainian people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer, O oh God, for our leaders and those in authority. We pray, Lord, that you will govern the leaders and those in authority. Give them wisdom to make the right decisions for our country and for the world. Lord, we pray for the leaders and all those who rule in our own country, but worldwide, because we are a global community. And so, Lord, we ask that you will guide the leaders of our world, especially those who make decisions that affect all of us. We pray this in Jesus' name. We pray for the church everywhere, especially those persecuted Christians in northern Nigeria, especially those in northern and central Nigeria who are suffering every day by the hands of Islamic extremists and bandits and evil people. Lord, we pray for them. We ask that you will give them strength, give them courage. Protect them from their enemies, we pray, O oh God. And we ask that, that you will bring an end to their suffering. <clears throat> and all Christians everywhere, those we're told in North Korea, <clears throat> Christians in North Korea who are also suffering there as well. Remember them, Lord, and all over the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear 
our prayer and the prayer for Christian unity. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, whose will it is that your church should be one visible body so that the world might see and believe, draw us and all your people closer to him who is the head, the one head, Jesus Christ, so that we may come closer to one another and unite us all in a common concern to share your good news with others and further your kingdom here on earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God, our Father, <clears throat> from whom all alone we have the desire and the power to live rightly, grant that the clean page of this day may remain unspotted to the end, and that whatever is recorded upon it by our lives may prove worthy to be treasured in our memories, so that at the day's closing we may present it unashamed to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace and his all-sufficient grace to sustain you today, sisters and brothers. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>